Hi there. Um, some time ago I was looking on the internet at some sort of technical information relating to the Sony ICF-2001D, um, a radio that obviously I own that you know that I've used a lot in my uh, the expeditions. Um, I came across a circuit diagram that someone had proposed for a signal attenuator because the Sony front end is known to be fairly weak to uh, any significant static discharges it can blow the uh, FETs. Uh, on the front end and then you have a sort of costly repair. Um, so they proposed an attenuator which is effectively a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer um, with a diode bridge that basically, so it does two things really, it, it will attenuate very strong signals to help prevent overloading but also protect from static discharges, surges etc which have been known to damage that radio. Um, I'll give a shout out to, to the guy's web page when I uh, upload the video but a few weeks ago I went to Maplin and bought the parts basically to build this device and the reason I did that was, was to employ it with the Sony and my other receivers but having recently been testing the rather brilliant little Texan PL310ET I thought it'd be fun to test this radio with a very long antenna but overloading is the uh, obvious issue there so Yesterday I decided to build the attenuator and here it is um, and I've just been testing it. So basically by adjusting the resistance between um, the antenna and earth um, you can effectively attenuate, attenuate the, the, the signal as it is it, it, uh, received um, at the radio. Um, and so just going to adjust the potentiometer now so we have full scale deflection 10 kilo ohms. Um, and if I wind it back, we should get to somewhere close to 1 ohm. Um, there we go. So, okay, 2.5 ohms. So, I've run an ETM scan on the Texan. Uh, I'm going to connect it up and let's see what it does to signal strength, so just bear with me. Okay, so 15430, um, not bad signal, measuring sort of 30 something dBU, so let's adjust the Yeah. Well, it's in decibels, so um, you can increase the signal, so I don't think you can say that it's known because it's uh, logarithmic. Um, but you can see we have a stronger, much stronger signal now. But interestingly, it's not doing much to the actual audio. Um, let's try and wind it back again. So yeah, so it's definitely working. Um, let's try another signal. Just the tension So, in terms of attenuating the signal, it's definitely working. Um, it's actually designed really for overloading on very strong signals. So, let's try this one. It's a very stable, strong signal. I would have wished to have gotten to be a champion. To be a champion. To be a professional champion. WBF, WBO, WBF, so that's very clearly I've done some things reducing the signal IBS, strength. But 47, 46, 44, pretty stable, 40. Because I've given it all the next So it's around 40. I know I gave uh, it it hundreds, but that's that I don't regret. I've been in the ring with big, big names. Guys who've gone for Olympics. I've been in the ring with the guys of uh, DK Kamau, 
go forward with it. Six weeks later, so back to and, uh, where it was previously. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it seems to be working pretty well. Um, and I guess next time I'm out on the expedition, um, I'll actually look for a signal that is properly overloading. I was going to connect this to the Wellbrook, but um, the loop is actually in the shed. So I've basically got the antenna here is basically just some wire that I've strung, it's probably about 15 feet of wire. Um, and the earth, which it, it probably isn't very good, I've connected to um, the, the water pipe. So the earth itself may not be very good, uh, the antenna is not very long, but despite that, um, it, it's definitely doing its job. So. Um, at my expedition with a really, really good earth, which I have, um, I'm expecting this to work very well. So, anyway, I thought I would share that with you, um, and when I test it out on the next the expedition, um, there'll be uh, some more videos of it uh, in use, I'm sure. Thanks for watching.